Hi, it's Dwyer, RichardDwyer.com. I'm a family lawyer and litigator in Northern California. Today is June the 8th, 2017. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I'm very happy to report that one of the defendants who I profiled here in an earlier video, David Temple, actually got his appeal granted. Right? That case is outrageous and to me underscores the problem with prosecutorial non disclosure. Right? That case is being talked about right now on crime shows. Now, of all the cases here online, that I have given an opinion on. The one that seems to generate the most controversy, in my opinion, the most heartfelt opposition to the idea that the defendant should not have been convicted is the Scott Peterson case. And let me point out that Scott Peterson, right, who is on death row, has been for more than a decade for killing his wife Lacey. Right? At least that's the verdict. Right? Scott Peterson has filed an appeal that I believe he should win. Now, understand, we either have a burden of proof or we don't. Right? Either the idea of the prosecution proving guilt beyond a reasonable doubt exists or it doesn't, right? You're not supposed to, as a juror, go by gut feeling and say, you know, it's more probable than not that the defendant is guilty, right? Nor are you supposed to read the paper and talk to your neighbors and reach the conclusion that the public believes the defendant is guilty and so the defendant should be convicted. Now, either the prosecution proves to you that this defendant did the crime, or it doesn't, right? You're supposed to believe that nobody else could have done the crime, right? The evidence shows beyond a reasonable doubt that of all the people on the planet, this is the only defendant who could have done the crime. Now many of you have written responses and I encourage responses. Let's discuss this. View this as a town square, right? That makes certain points that I believe can be easily rebutted by the evidence. Because really folks, the prosecution's theory of the case, in my opinion, isn't supported by anything substantial. It's really nothing more than conjecture and speculation. So, no one here believes, certainly I don't believe, that Scott Peterson was husband of the year. Right? Okay. He's a philanderer. Yes, his wife was eight months pregnant. And yes, Scott Peterson is cheating on her. Right? That's all true. But the crime that he was charged with wasn't adultery. It was murder. Now, many of you believe that Scott didn't want to be a father. Right? He and his wife are nine months, excuse me, eight months pregnant. The baby is due almost at any moment. Right? Scott Panics is fearful of fatherhood, would rather be with Amber Fry, right? The woman he's dating on the side. So he kills his wife to avoid fatherhood, right? To avoid a lifetime with a wife who he doesn't want to be with. There's a problem with that theory. The facts simply don't support it. Understand that as Scott was dating Amber Fry, Amber Fry was a single mother with a young child. 
If Scott's relationship with Amber Fry took off, Scott would have been stepfather to Amber's child. Right? He would have still been in the role of parent. He knew Amber Fry was a single mom. Everyone agrees on that. Right? So I don't believe fear of fatherhood, fear of being a parent, resulted in Scott killing Lacey Peterson, his wife, who was pregnant at the time, when Scott knowingly was dating a single mother. Also, think through what you feel is the chain of events that happened the morning of Lacey's disappearance, right? There's a lot of speculation about Scott's boat, right? The prosecution wants you to believe that Scott Peterson, right, secretly puts his wife's body in the boat and then is able to slip out Right? He's able to slip out. And no one sees him with his wife's body in the boat. Then, of course, he drives to the Berkeley Marina. Right? Quietly. Secretly. And he's able to take the boat out with the body in the back of the boat and he's able to throw the body off the boat without anyone else at the marina seeing him in this very small boat drop the body off the side. Right now you should know when Scott gets to Berkeley Marina there are people who actually see him put the boat in the water. Folks, there are no trees at the marina, right? The sight lines are unimpeded, right? Just like when you're at a beach and you could look down the beach and you could see someone, right? The people at the marina were able to see Scott back his boat into the water, right? They actually see it. And you know the rest. We're to believe that Scott, who, according to the prosecution theory, has killed his wife that morning and has secretly gotten her on a boat that his in-laws don't know that he has, right? And has somehow been able to, with the boat on the back of his vehicle, drive through the neighborhood secretly and go to Berkeley Marina. We're supposed to believe that in broad daylight, literally, broad daylight with people able to look from distance and see his boat. With other people there who actually see him put the boat in the water. We're supposed to believe that Scott has cement anchors that he secretly put together. Let me point out that if you look at pictures of the boat, in my opinion, they don't even support the cement anchor theory. Right? They don't. We're supposed to believe that there are marks on the boat that show the existence of other anchors. I don't think there are. I encourage you to look at the photos. But we're to believe that Scott, in this wide open environment, in a small boat that he has just gotten, right? He's just gotten the boat. Folks, he's not an expert with this boat. Even the prosecution concedes that Scott just got this boat. In choppy Berkeley Marina, with people who could see him, we're to believe that this is the spot that Scott decides is the perfect place and time to dump a body. Well, understand, 
That theory doesn't even match the timeline. Right? Let's go back to December 24th, 2002. Right? Understand, on that day, right? If you believe the prosecution, Scott either has just killed his wife the night before and is feverishly cleaning up and, you know, preparing to transport her body to his boat and then drive the boat to the Berkeley Marina, right? That's the prosecution's theory. Well, from 8.40 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. that morning, someone is on the internet at the Peterson residence. Right? Think it through. Could have been Scott. Could have been Lacey. Right, folks, there's nobody else there. The baby's not yet born. Right? What are they searching for? You're searching for things like a gap fleece scarf. Think about it. Right? They're searching for a sunflower motif umbrella. Does that sound to you like the kind of thing that would be searched by someone who has just killed his wife? You're going to take five minutes out and say, you know what, before I leave the house with this body and put the body on my boat, which is in a different location, right? Because there's a question on whether even Lacey knew he had a boat. He has the boat at his business warehouse, right? We're to believe that Scott Peterson in the middle of this thinks to himself, you know what? That fleece scarf at the Gap, why don't I go online right now and see what's going on with it? Or that sunflower umbrella, let me follow up with it. Okay, now I know some of you are going to say, well, you know, Scott is really a sociopath who's a genius. So he's thinking of throwing the cops off his trail, right? What better way to do so than to log on to the internet, make it look like perhaps Lacey's alive at 8.40 to 8.45 a.m. Right? Or make it look like you yourself are online doing behavior that's inconsistent with killing your pregnant wife and then cleaning up and bleaching the uh, house and stuff like that. Well, just to understand, Scott actually goes to his workplace, right? He's using a work computer. Think about it. This is after the 8.40 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. computer usage that morning. Scott actually leaves home between 9.30 and 9.45. Right? He's gone. What does he do after he leaves home? Now, the prosecution wants you to believe that he is spending his time putting a body on the back of his vehicle right in the boat well understand Scott actually goes he he gets the boat together the boats in a open parking lot right we're to believe that he loads Lacey's body onto the boat and then goes inside and uses his work computer from 10.30 to 10.56 a.m. Prosecution doesn't dispute this. Right, so Scott Peterson, folks, is surfing the internet on the very morning that the prosecution wants you to believe. 
that he has his wife on the back of a boat, right? That he, that he has outside, by the way, while he's surfing the internet. In other words, Tom, Dick, Harry, or Jane could have walked by the boat and said, wow, I smell something strange, right? If the body is killed, if Lacey is killed the night before, and that body starts to decay, you can imagine a neighbor, a passerby, a stray dog could have smelt the body and could have said, gee, what is this on the back of the boat? Scott, who was inside for the 26 minutes surfing the internet, would have had a whale of a hard time explaining what his dead wife's body was doing on his boat on the back of his car in the parking lot. Right? We're to believe that Scott, who is carefully covering up his crime, according to the prosecution's theory, right, leaves the body on the back of a boat in an open parking lot while he's spending 26 minutes surfing the net. Right? Think about that. Folks, that's not proof beyond a reasonable doubt. That's not even close. Especially when more than one person claims to have seen Lacey walking her dog that morning. Right? Think about it. The evidence is beyond thin. Right? So, Scott immediately out the gate out the gate when you know his wife is missing later immediately out the gate says hey I have a boat right according to reports he was planning on surprising Lacey's father with the boat over the Christmas holiday right I'm guessing Scott's not the only one with secret gifts that he plans to reveal to everyone over Christmas holidays. Isn't that why we wrap the gifts under the trees? Well, just understand that Scott tells the police he has a boat. Tells the police he was at the Berkeley Marina Right? Doesn't hide it. When the cops go to inspect Scott's boat, Scott's boat isn't cleaned. Right? Scott has left the boat as is. Think about it. As is. So the cops would be able to literally run whatever forensic test they wanted on the boat. This is the boat that we're supposed to believe he used to transport his wife's body to the Berkeley Marina. Let me also say too, let's have an alternative scenario here and understand women during that period of time Google this we're getting kidnapped in Modesto. Right? Let's have an alternative scenario. I don't know why this scenario isn't as likely as the prosecution's case. Right? I'm robbing a nearby house. By the way, a nearby house was robbed. Right? A house nearby to the Petersons. I'm robbing a nearby house. Here is a pregnant woman with her dog who stumbles upon us robbing the house. Right? The robbery happens right around the same time, folks. Did you know that? So, I decide, you know what? This woman's a witness. Let's grab her, figure out what we're going to do with her later. 
right? We're already on the wrong side of the law because we were robbing someone's house, right, on Christmas Eve. You have to be a really cold, depraved criminal to decide it's Christmas Eve, I'm going to go rob some house, right? Let's just think it through. Suddenly you hear that Scott Peterson was at the Berkeley Marina. Right? The body, of course, was found by the shallow part of the Berkeley Marina. So we're to believe that Scott Peterson goes to the Berkeley Marina and decides of all the places in the Berkeley Marina to dump the body in the shallow part where it's more likely to be found later or to wash up on shore. Right? Why couldn't whoever actually abducted Lacey? And we don't know. Keep in mind, I'm not saying Scott didn't do the crime. I'm just saying the proof doesn't meet the legal burden. Isn't a plausible scenario that explains the very forensic evidence we found that whoever abducted Lacey then decided to frame Scott, right? Let me say too, the body is found, we don't know when the body was put in the Berkeley Marina. Let me also say too that the Lacey Peterson case blew up nationally almost immediately. So just imagine, someone abducts Lacey Peterson, suddenly it's a national case. Something goes wrong, Lacey dies. What are you going to do with the body? Right? How can you best frame someone else? Right? So, I believe Scott has a lot to talk about in his appeal. Because I believe the facts of the case really, in my opinion, just don't support the guilty verdict. Also, Scott's, Scott's body language, right? Let's say you're Scott Peterson and you're having an affair. You're cheating on your wife. Now, keep in mind, Scott is the kind of guy who as he's cheating on his wife, he's not wearing a disguise, right? He gives his mistress his real name. There are photos of himself with his mistress, right? I would say this is a guy who is cheating on his wife almost in broad daylight, right? If you're going to kill your wife, is it a wise idea to have photos taken of you and your mistress? Is it a wise idea to tell your mistress your real name? Right? Amber Fry knows him as Scott Peterson. Now, Amber can't testify about anything that happened the day Lacey Peterson goes missing. Right? Nothing. She lacks any personal knowledge of any of those relevant facts, right? Any of those relevant facts. What's her connection to the case? She's a mistress who was lied to by a philanderer, right? Should her testimony have even been allowed at trial? Wasn't her testimony really about proving that Scott's a bad person? Not that Scott did this crime. Let's get back to how we would handle it if we were Scott. Right? And think for yourself. Your conclusions might be different than mine. You're cheating on your wife. Right? You've lied to your mistress. You've told your, mistresses, uh, your mistress stories about how you're out of town and how your wife died and things like that, right? You have a whole fake construct with your mistress. Suddenly your wife goes missing, right? You don't know what happened to her. 
She's eight months pregnant. Maybe the two of you have had problems. Of course, right? None of the neighbors knew that they were having any problems. No one saw them with problems. But let's say privately, because relationships are multi-layered. You and your wife are having problems. And let's say your wife vanishes and you think to yourself, you know, maybe she ran off. Maybe she doesn't want to have a kid with me. Worse yet, Scott claims Lacey knew that he was cheating on her. Maybe that was an issue. Wouldn't be the first relationship in which that would be an issue. Right? So Lacey runs off. You know you've lied to your mistress. The press descends on you. You feel that, you know, maybe you can stay in the background. Have the police find out what happened to your wife. Hopefully she's at the Motel 6 or wherever. She's with a relative out of town. She's someplace safe after having left you. Right? So you're in the background at first. How many of you watching this video would want to be front and center? Have your face all over the news? How many of you in talking with the cops, in addition to telling them what you did the morning your wife goes missing, right, the relevant facts, would then feel a need to say, by the way, I'm having an affair with Amber Fry, a woman who's never met my wife. Oh, and by the way, I've been lying to her, telling her that I'm widowed. Right? I'm guessing there are many people watching this video right, who would be a bit hushed. Right? You would be forthcoming in telling the police, look, here's where I was when she went missing. Here's what she was wearing the last time I saw her. Right? She was to walk the dog. You would have all of those details because you would consider those details relevant. But you might leave out the part of you having an affair because if you know you're innocent and that your affair had nothing to do with your wife possibly being abducted, right? That part you might leave out. Would it surprise you to know that Scott Peterson, without counsel, goes to the police station, just food for thought, goes to the police station and actually tells the cops, right, this is within 24 hours of Lacey going missing, right, everything he did the morning she went missing, right, he goes to the police, he tells the police, the same story that his defense team goes to trial with about that morning, right? That's not a lawyer construct. That's what Scott Peterson did. So the idea of a Scott Peterson cover-up is a bit ridiculous. The evidence of Scott dumping the body off his boat at the Berkeley Marina. What eyewitness supports that? That's a prosecution construct. That's prosecution speculation. Doesn't the case come down to he lied to his mistress, he cheated on his wife. He must be the killer. Right, well, to reach that conclusion, you have to get around the 26 minutes Scott Peterson is online the morning his wife goes missing while his vehicle with his boat are in the open parking lot. Right, if the prosecution wants you to believe that Lacey's body is on the boat 
Just to understand that the morning Lacey goes missing, Scott would have had her body on the boat in an open parking lot that a bystander could have just walked up to and looked in. Let me just say too that I want people to actually Google pictures of the boat. The boat is so small. This is not a yacht. I get the feeling many people think that Scott could have put the body downstairs in the boat and no one would see the body. No, this is a small boat where anything in the boat is completely visible. Right? Completely visible. And you're telling me that no one saw Lacey Peterson in the boat that morning. Put it this way. More people saw Lacey Peterson walking her dog that morning than saw Lacey Peterson in the boat. Right? I thought the legal standard was proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Folks, this looks thin. Right? Regardless of who we might speculate killed Lacey Peterson, the big question here is, is the evidence there to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt? Right? Finally, let me close by saying, Scott Peterson leaves Modesto. I'm guessing he's not the only person who's left a town where many people in town think he's killed his wife, right? A lot of people would say, you know what, let me start over, right? A lot of people. So Scott goes to San Diego. People are saying, aha. Scott clearly wanted to go to Mexico. Folks, he's in San Diego for a lengthy period of time. It might shock some people to learn that he had family members living in San Diego. Right? Now, Scott, of course, dyes his hair, changes his look, has cash on him. Right? Has cash in the car has camping stuff in the car, right? So many people want to then say, look at that. Scott obviously was guilty and was planning on running. What I want those people to do is to look at the timeline. Didn't Scott have more than enough time to run if that was his game? Compare and contrast when O.J. was on the freeway headed toward Mexico, right? Relative to the murder of Nicole Simpson. With the time Scott is in San Diego after the Lacey Peterson murder, right? Or when she goes missing, because we don't exactly know when her body is dumped in the Berkeley Marina. We don't actually know when she was murdered. Right? Could have been the day she goes missing. Could have been the day after that. Could have been the day after that. Could have been the day after that. We're not even sure of the day Lacey was murdered. But yet, Scott's still in the United States months later, isn't he? Also, the fact that he changed his look. If you were Scott Peterson and the American media thought you had killed your wife, wouldn't it cross your mind to change your look? Anyway, keep an eye on the Scott Peterson appeal. I personally believe it should be granted. 
Now, more than a decade later, we can look back at what was absolutely a media frenzy at the time of the trial, right? People cheered outside when Scott was found guilty. Now let's take a sober look at the actual evidence, right? I would argue to you that the idea of Scott leaving the body outside in the parking lot in his boat, on his car, while he surfs the internet for 26 minutes at work from 10.30 to 10.56 a.m. is simply not plausible. That doesn't, that doesn't sound to me like a plausible prosecution theory. Right? Let me also say, too, that whoever surfed the net from 8.40 a.m. to 8.45 a.m., the morning Lacey goes missing at the Peterson home, right? We don't know if that was Scott or if that was Lacey. Understand, if Lacey Peterson is still alive at 8.45 a.m., then you really have to ask yourself how Scott could then kill her, leave no forensic evidence, be out of the house within an hour, right? He leaves 9.30 to 9.45-ish, right? And then be able to do the things the prosecution is claiming he did, right? Have anchors, anchor the body, have the body in tarp, things like that. Especially given that, no one disputes that Scott then spends that very morning 26 minutes online from 10.30 a.m. to 10.56 a.m. Right? Think about it. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let's keep the dialogue going. I know many of you believe that Scott Peterson is guilty. The forensic evidence is so thin that people want to talk about a hair of Lacey's found on Scott's boat. A hair that, quite frankly, could have been a transfer particle, right? Understand, just ask yourself, is that all of Lacey Peterson found on Scott's boat? Did Scott have the opportunity to be that thorough where he has a body on his boat and all we're finding from that body is something like a hair, a hair that easily could have attached to his clothing and then, you know, been there on the boat, right? Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks again for stopping by.